The genome contains all of the genetic information of a living organism. The genome of each individual is unique. It is localized in the nucleus of every one of the millions of cells that make a human body up. It contains all of the instructions necessary to create life, like a collection of recipe books. If we keep the analogy with a collection of books, the genome is composed of 46 volumes, which are called chromosomes. These chromosomes are DNA, which contains an alphabet of four letters. A for adenine, C for cytosine, G for guanine, and T for thymine. These are organized in pairs, which are the bases and called nucleotides. The genome of a human contains more than 3 billion pairs of letters, which would fill the equivalent of 400 dictionaries. The genome contains about 20,000 recipes called genes, which themselves contain introns and exons. These recipes use exons to produce or code for the body's proteins. For example, in the muscles, the heart or the brain. The set of exons of the genome is called the exome. Even though the exome corresponds to only 1% of the genome, it is where we find the vast majority of anomalies, called variants, which are responsible for rare genetic diseases. The remaining 99% of the genome is called non-coding. If we compare the DNA of two people, we find, on average, a difference, a variant, every 1,000 letters. This means that between two people, the genetic code is identical at 99.9%. There are more than 3 million variants in the genome of a person. 20,000 are in the exome. Collectively and in combination with the environment, these variants are responsible for the uniqueness of each human being. They may be frequent or rare, meaning that they can be found in a large number of persons or can be unique. They can be of any type and of any size, ranging from a single letter change to the suppression or the addition of an entire chromosome. The vast majority of genetic variants in each person are inherited from one parent or the other. Rarely, they are new and not found in either of the parents. These genetic variants are the result of errors in the cellular machinery, either during the development of the spermatozoa or the oocytes, or during the first divisions of the embryo. Each variant, whether inherited or new, may have a positive, negative or neutral impact. A neutral variant will have no visible effect on the person. A positive variant may in a given environment, give an advantage to the person. For example, it may prevent the development of an infectious disease. A negative variant alters cellular functions and is responsible for a genetic disease. The fact that negative variants are generally rare explains why most genetic diseases are rare. The number of genes in the genome, 20,000, explains why thousands of rare diseases exist. Sequencing is a technique that consists in reading DNA. Until recently, it was impossible to sequence large quantities of DNA from a person. Explorations in a context of genetic disease were limited to the study of a few suspected genes and were driven by medical hypotheses. Thanks to major technological advances, it is now possible to sequence the whole exome or genome of an individual very rapidly and at lower costs. This is what we call next-generation sequencing. The vast quantities of data generated by these new technologies are analyzed using powerful computer tools, which make it possible to compare the individual genome with a reference genome and to identify genetic variants. Even though it is now possible to read the whole genome, 
it is still difficult to interpret the results, notably because of current knowledge limits. To facilitate this interpretation, it is often necessary to study the DNA of parents, and more rarely the DNA of other members of the family. Given the large number of variants in each individual, the challenge with a genetic disease consists in identifying the variants responsible for the disease, which is like looking for the proverbial needle in a haystack. This analysis requires numerous computer tools and the combined expertise of bioinformaticians, biologists and clinical geneticists. Nonetheless, the result of this genetic test may be negative or may identify a variant of significance with the current knowledge. Exceptionally, this examination may lead to the discovery of information concerning other diseases that may develop later in life and for which preventive measures or treatments are available. For example, an anomaly in the BRCA1 gene responsible for breast and ovarian cancer. This information is medically important for patients and members of their families. The decision to be informed or not about such anomalies is made by the patient. Overall, three results are possible for the disease concerned. Positive after the identification of certain or highly probable cause of the genetic of the disease. Non-conclusive if the causality of the candidate's genetic variance is uncertain. Such a result could lead to additional investigations which are likely to evolve with advances in scientific knowledge. Finally, it will remain negative in the apparent absence of any association in the light of current scientific knowledge between the detected variants and the cause of the disease studied. Research in the field will improve knowledge. It is therefore possible that the cause of a disease may be identified several years after the first examination by periodically reanalyzing the data. Because of the complexity and the potentially sensitive nature of the results, it is essential for the information to be communicated by a professional in medical genetics well aware of the specificity of this genetic test. <laughs>